not attempt to adjust your audio settings. Your system is working at optimum capability. There is no need to look over your shoulder, just relax. Breathe. It will all soon be crystal clear. There we are. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. True Horror Stories of Texas. The Dusty House on the Right. Tonight's story comes to us from outside Almito, Texas, just a few miles from Rancho Viejo in the year 1996, where a young ranch hand worked from the age of 16 until 19. After, After I, I finished finish exercising, exercising all, the all the horses, there was a horse I was allowed to ride for just fun. I would often ride the horse on dirt roads that interlaced with the fields out by the ranch where the horses were kept. One day, I went down the road, through the fields, and went onto a main dirt road that I usually went left on. But for some reason, that day I turned right. My horse and I went down away in about half an hour or so, we came upon some dusty houses just off the side of the road. One of the houses had the door open and a crooked hand-painted sign that said, Braspas, 50 cents. I thought it was kind of odd, but it was a blistering hot day. So, I rode my horse up and we went inside to take a closer look. When I went inside, there were two boys about my age, dressed in black. I figured they were some sort of Metallica fans or some other heavy metal band, but it did seem way out of place, way out there. One was tall and fat and the other one was short and skinny. Both of them had jet black hair and white skin with brown eyes that were so light in color. They almost looked red. When I walked in, they looked at each other and just grinned. I should have walked out right then and there, but I told myself that I was just being silly. I walked up to the counter where they had some raspa flavoring jugs on a very dusty counter. I gave them the 50 cents for the raspa and waited while they made it. As one boy was scooping up the ice, he kept looking at the other one and they kept glancing at me, giggling, and then glancing at each other and giggling again. It was the creepiest thing ever, so I looked away from them and around the house. And that's when I noticed it was more of an old shop with an ancient Coca-Cola machine. An old register, shelves, and every single thing inside that store was covered in a thick layer of dust. As if nothing had been disturbed in decades. Even the window glass was so filled with dust, hardly any light came in. Your, Your is ready. ready said the younger one and i must have jumped a foot in the air i i turned to him and he was holding it out to me both of them were smiling really really big and both of their lips were super red if they had just been eating something red i looked at my raspa and it was untouched i looked back at the skinny guy and he had the pointiest teeth by this time the hair on the back of my neck was standing up and i thought that either these guys were on drugs or maybe they were crazy but either way I didn't need to be there, so with my heart in my throat, I beat my feet out the door. They followed me into the bright sunshine. I had put my horse's rein on a post that was next to the house. They just stood in front of the house, watching me and giggling at each other. My horse, a normally steady and easygoing quarter horse, was trembling. When I unhooked the reins, my horse pulled back hard, trying to get away. His eyes were rolling, he was starting to sweat, and he was mouthing his bit so much that his mouth started to lather. He wouldn't stay still as I tried to mount him. And normally, with that horse, you could mount him doing a running jump off the barn screaming, Geronimo! And he'd barely blink an eye. As he skittered away from me, the guy's giggles became louder. I finally mounted my horse, but he kept twisting and turning nervously, almost out of control. I still had the stupid raspa in my hand and it was getting pretty sloshy by this time. The short skinny guy took a step towards me and said, your name, Your name is Cynthia, Cynthia right? right? I could feel my horse trembling under me and while every nerve in my body was screaming, RUN! The fact that he knew my name kept me there. Do, Do I, I know, know you? you? They looked at each other and giggled more. Do, Do we, we go, go to, to school, school together? together? They both giggled hysterically and looked at each other. The skinny guy said, Oh, oh you don't, know, don't me, know me, but I, but definitely, I definitely know, know you. you. And he reached up with his hand as if to touch my horse. And when he did that, my horse totally freaked out. He reared on his hind legs so high, I thought we were going to go over. The raspa went all over me as I let go and hung on for all I was worth. 
He screamed and pawed with both of his forelegs at the guy, his hooves inches away from his head, and the guy just laughed and laughed. Red ripped the rein to my hands and took off full blast back towards the barn, cutting clear across the field until somehow we made it back to the ranch. Whoa, Red, calm down, easy, easy. Red had never even stopped, heading full speed into the barn and almost taking my head off as he tried to get back in his stall. He was winded from his run and trembling all over. The ranch hand and her assistant came running to me to see if I was all right. As the assistant took Red to cool him off, I told her what happened. I showed her the graspa stains on my shirt and jeans and I was sure there must have been some on the saddle too. I was so creeped out by it and so convinced at what I had seen that she insisted we mount three more horses and ride out there. We went onto the dirt road I always use and you can see my horse's hoof prints clear as day. We followed them down to the right about half an hour or so and sure enough, there were no houses there. No house to speak of, not a single one. But where the hoof prints ended and turned into turmoil was my very own boot prints and a pink and dirty raspa cone laying among them. Animals are said to have the ability to sense when something is wrong or when things are not as they seem. We should listen to our furry friends from time to time. They might just save you from losing your raspa. True Horror Stories of Texas. Until next time, stay spooky, my friends. <laughs>